And now it's time for afternoon theatre. Time stroll. Down Regent Street, across Piccadilly, into Waterloo Place, and along Pall Mall. Pall Mall. Once the centre of London's clubland, they tell me. Before my time, of course. Granddad's day, not mine. Oh, I'm young Mr. Perry. Bannerman, Perry and Haynes, solicitors. And I think of it, so was Granddad. Young Mr. Perry, I mean, at the turn of the century. He used to specialise in criminal cases. And well, now it's all divorces, property deals. Not the only thing that's changed, of course. Cars, buses. Not like Granddad's day. Then it was all horse-drawn vehicles. Must have smelt a bit in the summer. But then there wouldn't be many people in London in the summer. Not if they had money and no business ties. Off to the coast and the continent. And that's how it was one summer at the turn of the century. The summer this story begins. And it began in a club in Pall Mall. The Regent's Club. It's not there anymore, of course. On a hot August day, the members' lounge was almost empty. Almost, but not quite. Two men were talking quietly. Quietly, but urgently. It's awkward, Harry. What can we do? Awkward? The firm of Horsham and Stukely facing ruin, and you call it awkward? Oh, it may not be as bad as that. No face facts, just your face facts. I am trying to. We shall just have to file a petition. I'll call at the Chancery Office tomorrow. Uh, we should manage a fair settlement. No, no, no. Uh, but you said yourself... It's all right for you. You're at the end of your career. I'm only just starting mine. I don't intend to start with the bankruptcy. If only that Indian project hadn't let us down. You shouldn't have gone into it, Harry. It looked safe enough. You said so yourself. I, 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 I know. I'm sorry. Uh, that there's uh, nothing more to be done. Oh? Uh, you thought of something? I didn't have to. It's been there all the time, staring us in the face. I, I don't see what. I'm uh, unmarried, you know. Uh, uh, unmarried? Oh, you're not thinking of Beatrix. <laughs> Why not? Look, Harry, leave Beatrix out of this. Leave her out when the man she marries gets 30,000 pounds. She can't marry without the consent of her guardians. Of whom you are one. Uh, what about the other? Uh, Francis Mendel Essington? I think we could manage him between us. Uh, uh, what about Beatrix herself? She might not agree. She'll agree. If you advise her. Uh, uh, no, Harry, no. I won't be party to anything like that. I'm not such a bad catch, am I? She may jump at the chance. At least we can try. You're... You, you're sure there's no other way? It's that, or ruin. Well, what do you say? Uh... Well... Does it, Joshua, old man? Do you want to see everything you've built up over the years all knocked down? Or do you? You, 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 you really think she... Uh, she might like the idea? Well, there's only one way of finding out. You'll give me your backing? Uh, very well. Good. Now, how long have we got? Uh, a month. The first bill's not due for a month. I'll have to work fast, then. Where is Beatrix? Uh, Switzerland, with her aunt. She's due back in a couple of days. Splendid. You know... She may have other ideas, someone else in mind. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. In two days, you said. I must make sure she's met properly at the station. Flowers. Uh, yes, roses, I think. And a decent dinner somewhere. Uh. Oh, you know, Joshua, Beatrix is a lucky girl. A very lucky girl. Mademoiselle Beatrix, uh... Steins? Oh, me voici, garçon. Ah. Uh, mademoiselle, uh, yes. miss, uh, the young English gentleman, oh. uh, the two young English gentlemen, uh, they asked me to tell mademoiselle is the, uh, uh, how you say, uh, le coast, the coast. Is it clear? <laughs> tell him from me. My aunt has gone upstairs with a headache. And the coast? He is clear. Good. <laughs> ah, here are the two gentlemen. Uh, the coast is clear. Uh, so we saw. <laughs> From the doorway. Uh, two till, perhaps you will... Uh... Oh, yes, certainly. Good. Thank you, sir. Uh, gentlemen, I, I am so pleased the coast uh... is clear. <laughs> Auntie's upstairs, Philip. A headache. Yes, uh, thank goodness. Well, I hope it lasts. <laughs> really? Oh, nothing painful. Just long enough for us to get the details fixed. You don't mind my being here, Miss Stevens? Of course not, Mr. Tootill. I know you are a friend. Indeed, I am, Miss Staines. Of course, I know you can never... Never. Yes, Mr. Tootill? Oh, it doesn't matter. Just a friend. Yes. Now to business. 
No, I leave first thing in the morning. We leave together. Uh, exactly, Tutu. Arrived back in London, I write at once to your guardian. Oh, one of my guardians? Uh, yes, Sir Joshua Horsham, care of the Regents Club, mm -hmm. Pall Mall. Now, he will contact your other guardian, Mr... Oh, Mr. Francis Mandel Essington. But he's no problem. Oh, why not? Never you mind. He isn't. Sir Joshua is a nut we have to crack. All right. But then on Thursday, I meet your boat train at Victoria. I'll be there too. Yes. After that, uh -huh. it's all plain sailing. A short engagement, wedding veil. Oh, Philip, dearest. Oh, Beatrix, darling. Look here. I think you might manage a kiss. Just a little one. Go on. The coast. He is clear. <laughs> It was urgent, Joshua. Uh, read that. It came this morning. Oh. I see. Who is this Philip Ridley? Damn if I know. Does it matter? It puts an end to our little plan. I don't see why it should. I warned you there might be somebody else. Well, there is. Then we shall have to get rid of him. Get rid? Get... Harry, you're not suggesting... No, oh, don't be so melodramatic, Joshua. I mean, I must claim a lover's right to better my rival. All's fair in love. Love? <laughs> Precious little love about it. Then let's call it war. War to save the reputation of Horsham and Stukely Limited. Uh, what do you intend to do? Mind, uh, nothing criminal. I won't countenance anything criminal. Oh, my dear Joshua, how little you know me. I may, of course, keep this note. Uh, I, I suppose so. Thank you. It may come in useful. Now, we must make arrangements to have Miss Beatrix Staines met at Victoria without the embarrassment of a rival reception. The two gentlemen to see you, Mr. Perry. Uh, show them in, Johnson, show them in. Mm. Uh, this way, gentlemen. Mm. Young Mr. Perry will attend to you now. Uh, come in, come in. Uh, Mr. Philip Ridley? Uh, that is my name. And Mr. Toothill. Oh, pleased to meet you. Uh, do sit down. <coughs> Uh, don't take any notice of that bit about young Mr. Perry. Johnson's been here 40 years. It's just his way of letting me know. I quite understand, Mr. Perry. Now, what can I do for you? Oh, uh, we need legal advice. I see. Some youthful scrape, perhaps? Oh, no. Not in the least. Well, you know I only take on criminal cases. Well, that is why we came. You see, we think a crime has been committed. You think? Oh, we can't be sure. Well, tell me about it. Just briefly, in your own way. Well, I'll try. This summer, I was travelling on the continent. I was with him. We were travelling on the continent. I met and fell in love with a Miss Beatrix Staines. She was a very beautiful and charming girl. I, uh, well, I became engaged to her. Personally, I don't see how anyone could help it. No, more do I. Uh, uh, falling in love with her, I mean, I, I did myself. Well, go on, Mr. Ridley. Unfortunately, Miss Staines is very rich. Uh, an heiress, in fact. Unfortunately? Well, I mean, she'll be much richer than I am, or ever will be. You know, Tootill, she may have... Nonsense, thought... Philip, she couldn't think that. Well, her guardian might. Guardian? Oh, Miss Staines is an orphan. She has two guardians. If she marries without their consent, she loses all her money. I believe it goes to charity. And do her guardians know about you? Uh, one of them does. Beatrix suggested I should write and ask his permission. She would follow up my letter when she would return to London. In fact, we were to drive to his club together, straight from Victoria, last night. And did you? No. Up till last evening, everything had gone according to plan. I wrote the letter, and I went to the arrival platform of Victoria to meet the boat train. Philip! Philip! Hello, Tootil. You here? I, I couldn't help it. I know it's pushing my nose in, but I couldn't keep away. She's so... Yes, so... That's all right. We'll wait together. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Still a few minutes to wait. No, sir. I, I'm not Mr. Philip Ridley. Confound your impudence. Sorry, sir. I'm sure. But I must find that gentleman. If you hear that, Philip, someone's looking for you. Here. You. I say. Are you looking for Mr. Philip Ridley? Would you be that gentleman, sir? Oh, that is my name. Oh, then this note's for you, sir. Uh, from Miss Beatrix Staines. From Miss Staines? How did you come by it? Oh, my mistress is a friend of Miss Staines. I came across by the morning boat from Boulogne. I said I should find you on the continental arrival platform. What did it say, Philip? Um, change of plan. Arriving Charing Cross 9.15 instead of Victoria. Please meet me there. Love, Beatrix. 9.15? It's five to nine now. Oh, we could just make it. Shall I get you a cab? Please? Yes. Hurry. Here, hurry. You got the cab? Yes. I take it Miss Staines was not at Charing Cross. There were no boat trains arriving at Charing Cross that evening. So you went back to Victoria? At once. Too late. 
Now, what about the man who handed you the note? Uh, a porter remembered him. He had put Miss Staines' luggage into a cab and, and driven off. And Miss Staines? We got a glimpse of her just as we drove up. At least we think it was her. She was in a cab. Uh, there was a man with her, a tall man in a fur coat. You know who this man was? <sighs> no. One of her guardians, perhaps, the one you wrote to. Well, that's what I thought. I called on him at once at his club. What did you say his name was? Sir Joshua Horsham. Well, of Horsham and Stukeley uh, at Lloyd. That's the fellow. Though he looked a bit of a bounder to me. Uh, you told him what had happened? I did. Told me to mind my own affairs. He got your letter. He called me a fortune hunter. Forbade me to pursue the matter any further. And not a word about what had happened to Beatrix. <laughs> well, surely that means that it's all right. Except for one thing. The note to me, the one the man handed me at Victoria. It was a forgery. Are you sure of that? Absolutely. Dash it, he's had enough notes from her. If I hadn't been so rushed and flustered, I, I should have noticed it at once. And now I'm certain. I see. So, one of Miss Staines's guardians proved a stumbling block. Oh, why not try the other? You think that's the course to follow? Well, until you've done that, you can't very well take any more drastic action. Yes. You know his name? And his address. He lives at a place called The Retreat, near Bridminton. The retreat. You know it. The guardian's name is... Uh, Mr. Francis Mandel Essington. Mandel Essington? You know him? Well, that ought to make things easier. Easier? Oh, dear, no, not in the least. But surely... Mr. Ridley, Francis Mandel Essington is a client of mine. There you are, Vincent. Listen, I'm at present having a rest from Mr. Mandel Essington. A rest I have earned and richly deserved. I have hoped, I might almost say, prayed that I should not hear so much as his name breathe in this office for a few months more. I should have known that such hopes were in vain. Francis Mandel Essington is quite incapable of not popping up when you least expect it. Mr. Ridley, Mr. Tootheel, there is something you ought to know about this man. About Mr. Francis Mandel Essington. Something you must know before we go any further. Come in. Ah, Mr. Mandel Essington. Oh, please, Dr. Jenkinson. Let us dispense with the Mandel. As you wish, Mr. Essington, as you wish. Mm -hmm. I have to tell you a wonderful piece of news, Dr. Jenkinson. Prepare for a happy surprise. Indeed. Thanks to your truly marvellous treatment, I am completely cured. There. I'm very glad to hear it, Mr. Essington. Mm -hmm. I, I hope you'll be able to leave the retreat soon. Very soon. Oh, Oh, I, I, I hoped you might be a little bit sorry. Oh, never mind, never mind. I, I shall miss you all, Doctor, extremely. Especially the fellow who thinks he's the equator and tries to encircle all the ladies. <laughs> however, however, let me tell you what I propose. Now, Dr. Waters tells me he's going to town tomorrow. Well, seeing I'm completely cured, I've decided to go with him, just to get used to things, you know, before finally leaving you all. Now, don't you think that's an excellent idea? Uh, excellent, uh, Mr. Essington. Uh, but perhaps not quite yet. Uh, uh, stop. One moment. Don't say anything you might regret afterwards, Dr. Jenkinson. It would upset me no end. Oh, lovely. <laughs> now, let me go with Walters tomorrow, and I give you my solemn promise. Only one bottle of bubbly, speak for one minute to one pretty girl, order only one pair of pale grey trousers, and my word of honour to come back at night. There. Not quite yet, Mr. Essington. Is that your last word, Dr. Jenkinson? Uh, for the present. Only for the present, as you say, before very long. For several months, entirely of my own free will, I have supplied you with one-twentieth of your income. Now you refuse me a single day at my own expense. I'm sure we've done our best to make you happy with this. And you have succeeded, Dr. Jenkinson. I know that the accommodation that Her Gracious Majesty the Queen would have provided for me, had certain people had their way, would not have come up to the standards of the retreat. But now... Uh, I... Not... Yet, Mr. Essington. No. No. Well, I bow to your decision, sir. But you alone must bear the consequences. Of course. Uh, now, if you'll forgive me. Dr. Jenkinson, I fear that if the great Dante were writing today, he would depict you in a very uncomfortable position. A very uncomfortable position indeed. Dr. Walters? Speaking. Oh, Jenkinson here. I've just had a visit from Essington. Something about going with you to London. Oh, that. I meant to warn you. He insisted on speaking about it. Of course, I didn't encourage him. Of course. It's a very difficult case, Dr. Walters. Very much so. If one met Essington socially, one would put him down.
son is an extremely alert, likeable chap. Well, many people have, Walters. Many people have. They finished up holding dud checks and missing their daughters. He's so irresponsible. Hardly a case of insanity. Still, keeping him here does prevent problems. The only alternative seems to be a prison cell. At least till the last bit of trouble dies down. Uh, by the way, he seemed to hint at trying to get over the wall. Has he... Uh... Nothing in that line, sir. Uh, you know he can't resist telling everyone if he's thinking of doing anything spectacular. Oh, we'd soon know. He's so frank and open. Uh, just keep an eye on him. Very good, sir. Oh, about tomorrow. Uh, might I borrow your railway timetable to check on the London train? Oh, certainly. It's on my desk here somewhere. Just a moment. Are you there, sir? Yes, Walters. I'm here, but the railway timetable isn't. I wonder, is Essington as frank and open as we imagine? Oh, let me see, let me see. Um, no, I could catch the... 5.52 from Bridminton, or the 6.15 from Watbury. Good, good. Now, that only leaves a small matter of getting over the wall. Uh, hello? There's Waters pretending to do a bit of gardening. I bet Jenkinson's had a word with him. I wish I hadn't dropped that hint. That's always been my trouble. Too honest, too trusting. I say! I, I say! Oh, the stranger in the bushes? Can't be a new patient, surely. Mr. Mandel Essington. Knows my name, too. I'm blessed if I know him. Is Walter's looking? No, no, he's tending the delphiniums. Uh, yes? What do you want? I, I, I'll come over. No, no, stay where you are. I'll come over to the bushes. Now, keep your voice down. Who are you? Uh, my name is Ridley, Philip Ridley. Excellent name. Charmed to meet you. Uh, no, 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 no. Keep out of sight. Uh, that's, that's a very fine blue Melton coat you have on. Okay. Well, I know you better. I'll ask you who your tailor is. I didn't come to talk about clothes, sir. Pity. Pity. What exactly did you come to talk about? You are one of Miss Beatrix Stain's guardians. Miss Beatrix Stain? Ah, yes. Now you mention it, I believe her father did pay that remarkable compliment to my <laughs> solidity of character. Um, ugly little thing with pigtails, isn't she? About hey? ten, if I remember. She's twenty-one. You don't say. Pretty enchanting. Only she's disappeared. Mm. Begun already, has she? Ah, uh, well, girls will be girls. You're not worried? Good heavens, no. Well, perhaps I haven't made myself clear. Well, let me explain. Please do. I met Miss Staines in Switzerland, uh, and we became engaged. <laughs> Whereupon she disappeared? Oh, no. no. That is, she didn't disappear immediately. Oh. Uh, she was driven off from Victoria Station by a man in a fur coat. Oh, really? The number of fellows with fur coats nowadays is extraordinary. Quite extraordinary. I tell you, she's disappeared. It reminds me of a very old friend of mine. Charming girl. He met at absolutely disappeared, along with his pearl cufflinks. Please! Keep the voice down, old chap. That, that fellow over there, you... Oh, it's all right, he's gone back to the Delphiniums. I hoped you might help. So I will, old chap, so I will. Now, first thing, get onto the track of my fellow guardian, Sir Joshua Horsham. Yes, sir. But mind you, mind you, I dare say he's married a girl himself by now. Yes, right. Still, if we can recover the lady and bribe the registrar... You think that Sir Joshua's at the bottom of it? Mm, it's only a theory. We must chase somebody. I mean, they always do, don't they? I know Horsham can't run very fast. Mm. We're more likely to catch him than anyone else. <laughs> <laughs> if he's got the girl, we'll get her too. If not, well, it'll be a bit of fun. Fun? Oh, my dear Ridley, I really am devilish sorry. I can't say precisely under which thimble you'll find the pea. Dr. Jenkinson has no doubt told you I am at present so superior to my fellows, both mentally and morally, that they have secluded me in this Garden of Eden until I become more commonplace here. Yes. If you can persuade the good doctor to let me come with you into the forbidden outer world... Uh, but no doubt you've already asked, Dr. Jenkins. Well, I I'm afraid I haven't seen him. Not seen him, but you must have done. Everybody does. Well, the fact is, I came down here with a friend. Mm -hmm. We agreed it would make things easier if I saw you without the authorities knowing. Oh, forgive me, Ridley. I thought you were as orthodox as you look. This is much more promising. How do you manage to get in? Well, I told them at the gate I wanted to see the superintendent. Then I asked a likely-looking fellow where I could find you. As easy as that? Yes. Oh, wait till you try getting out. <laughs> but, but, but perhaps you've thought of a way... Uh, perhaps we could walk out together? I'm sorry, Mr. Essington. I can't possibly do that. I see, I see. Well, th this friend of yours, where is he? Oh, in the lane that runs by the wall. Is he trustworthy? Oh. Discreet? Hmm? A fellow who'll obey instructions to the letter? Absolutely. Yes, then I think... 
No, no, I'm sure I can help. How? Oh. Look, just wait here until I get my notebook. It, it, it's full of names and addresses, all the ones you'll need. Oh, shall I come with you? No, 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 no. And remember, Dr. Jenkinson doesn't know you're here. It's better if nobody knows you've seen me. And there's one trifling favour I must ask of you. A favour? Yes. Well, you are aware of the uh, nature of this establishment. Oh, yes. Mr. Perry explained to me. Perry, excellent lawyer. It was he who got me in here, you know. Surprising how many people didn't want me to come. Now, listen closely. You, you see that fellow breathing heavily on the delphiniums? Yes, I see. Oh, pitiful case, poor fellow. Most extraordinary delusion about the colour yellow. Mm -hmm. You know why he's keeping an eye on me? No. Oh, it's your coat. Exactly. <gasps> My coat is yellow. Now... He won't approach me, but if I approach him, oh, argument, an unpleasant scene, valuable time wasted, you see. I see. Yes, yes. so we change coats. We hmm? change? Yes, when he's oh, watching. Oh, yes. Now, I come into the bushes, and off with my coat. Yes. Come on, hurry, man, hurry. Here, now, here you are. Good, good, good. Now, step out backwards through the bushes. Yes. So... So, now, just stand there quietly, and I'll fetch the notebook. I'll be back inside five minutes, right? Uh, as you say. And keep your back to him. I'll be five minutes at the most. You mustn't keep your friend in the lane waiting, must we? Your trustworthy, discreet friend. Hmm? Oh, he's waiting. It's all right for Philip. He's doing something. Oh, if only he'd give me something to do. For her sake. Anything at all. Hello. By Joe, someone's climbing over the wall. Oh, you there. Mr. Ridley's friend. Give me a hand. Something to do at last. Here I am. Steady now. Mm -hmm. oh. Well, 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 here we are then. Who, who are you? Francis Mandel Essington, at your service. Then you've got out. I, I mean, you've come out after all. But I thought Philip was against it. He was at first. Changed his mind. Told me to tell you. Where is Philip? Uh, covering my tracks, like the good fellow he is. Ah. He assured me I could depend on you, Mr... Mr... Tootil, my card. Tootil, of course. How silly of me. I'm longing to lend a hand, believe me. I'm a friend of hers, you know. Hers? Oh, of course, dear Beatrix. Yes. Mm. Well, I, I, I suggest for a start that we get a little farther away from this wall, eh? Aye. This way. Mm. This way. What are you going to do? Well, in the first place, toot your old chap, and entirely for her sake, you understand, Ridley wishes you to do a trifling favour. Anything. Anything at all. He wishes you, toot to lend me uh, a five-pound note, perhaps? Rather. Uh, here. Uh, I'd better make it two. Hmm? Well, in fact, as much as you can conveniently manage. Oh, take all I've got. I'm only too delighted. Oh, my dear chap. Ah, oh, oh, the roadway. One way, Waterbury, the other, Bridminton. Yes. Now, another small favour. I'm game for anything. Your coat. Eh? Your coat. You see, they'll be looking for the man in a blue coat. But in your green coat, I shall escape detection. Ah. Hmm? Yes. Of course, we shall change back the very first thing when we meet again. Right, sir. Good, good fellow. Ah, there we are. Now, all you have to do is turn right and make for Bridminton. Catch the 552 train to London. 552? Mm -hmm. But it can't be more than two miles. You'll run it in no time. Run it? But I... For her I... sake, two tail, for her sake. Oh, very well. Yes, and you'll need some money. Here, old chap, take some of mine. Oh, thank you. Not at all. Now, off with you. Then tell Philip I'll be at my auntie's. Yeah, uh, speed, speed, my dear chap. Lady Beaton, he knows the address. Uh, Beaton, of course. And yes. when you find Beatrix... I know, dear boy, your undying love. Goodbye. Goodbye. <sighs> At last. Now, off I go in this remarkably fine green coat in the opposite direction. <laughs> I wonder how Ridley's faring. Haven't heard any sounds of alarm yet. Oh, ten minutes. And he said he wouldn't be more than five. Excuse me. Huh? Mr. Ressington, sir. Oh, dear, the man who doesn't like yellow. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, my my dear fellow. Uh, here. Turn round a minute. Now, don't excite yourself. You're not Mr. Ressington. Now, calm. Keep your hands off me. Where is Mr. Ressington? Where is he? Why do you want to know? I'm Dr. Walters, his personal physician. His... Then you're not... He, he isn't... Oh, damn. Where is Mr. Ressington? I don't know. I thought I did, but I don't. Come with me, sir, to Dr. Jenkinson's office. We must tell him at once. Mr. Mason, how good of you to call. Well, just a little business matter, Dr. Jenkinson. 
Yeah, I trust Mr. Mandel Essington's well. Oh, very well. And much, uh, much steadier than when he came to us. Why, only this afternoon, he made a perfectly reasonable application to take a supervised trip to London. Indeed. I trust you did not accede to his request. Oh, dear, no. Uh, but it shows the trust that is growing between us. Oh, yes. Yes, I am relieved to hear it. You see, Dr. Jenkinson, it has come to my knowledge that certain unscrupulous persons may endeavour to contact Mr. Essington to involve him in affairs that can only add to his mental cares. Sir Joshua and I are agreed that this must not happen. I can assure you he is perfectly safe with us, Mr. Mason. Mm. In that case, I should like to see him. There's a small document that needs his signature, some slight legal matter. It shouldn't take a moment. I'll send for him. Dr. Jenkinson. Wait, sir, I have a visitor. Please, sir, Mr. Mandel Essington. Yes, yes. He's escaped. He can't have done. I warned you. Good Lord, the man in the fur coat. And who are you, sir? No matter, we must catch him. He can't have got far. He's wearing a blue Melton coat. The railway stations. I have a cab waiting. Come. Dr. Walters, you take my gig. Go to Bridmington. Right away, sir. Come, gentlemen. We must lose no time now. Hurry up, man. Come along. Dr. Jenkinson, that man, who is he? Mr. Mason? Uh, a friend of Sir Joshua Horsham and uh, Mr. Essington. What concern is it? I saw him once in a cab with a friend of mine. Can you tell me... Sir, I shall have some questions to ask you before I answer any. And now to the station at Wadbury. Still in. Uh, here, Porter, uh, you there. Major, have you seen a man in a blue coat? Major? A man in a blue coat. On no account must he be allowed to board the train, understand? Use force if necessary. Major? He may be on board already. Uh, we must search the train. He must be found. Perhaps he went to Bridminton. It would have been nearer. The only train left there at 5.52. I hardly think Essington could have run the distance in the time. Besides, Dr. Walters is covering Bridminton. Gentlemen, we are wasting time. Here come Walters. He must have drawn a blank. He can help us search. Uh, let's take a carriage each. Dr. Jenkinson! Dr. Jenkinson! Over here, Walters! He's got away. What? what? A man in blue coat, boarded train, 552. A porter remembered. No doubt at all. Oh, missed him by Joe. What can we do now? Uh, Jenkinson. If you ask me, we should call in the police. That is out of the question. I don't see it in my opinion. Nobody is asking your opinion, sir. I agree with Dr. Jenkinson. Thank you, Mr. Mason. A scandal would do nobody any good. We must follow the trail ourselves. Now, first, back to the retreat. Uh, I have some phone calls to make. I, too, must contact Sir Joshua. Mr. Mason. Uh, uh, sir, I believe I saw you lately with Miss Beatrix Staines. And who might that lady be? If you are acquainted with Sir Joshua Horsham, I should have thought you would know of her. I am not au fait with all Sir Joshua's private affairs, sir. Nor do I see why I should discuss them with you. Mason, we must hurry! Besides, there are more urgent affairs in hand. It was him. The guilt was written all over his face. Hi, you there. Hurry up if you want to live. Coming. Hello, who's your lady friend? Who that little curly boy you show me? Oh, you sure? Porter. Oh, me, sir? Yes, my dear chap. A um, little trouble, was there? Oh, I don't rightly know, sir. Those uh, gentlemen never quite got around to saying. Mm -hmm. Excitable types, I should say. Oh. I waited till they'd gone. I don't enjoy rowdy company. Well, now I'll take my seat on the train. Well, take it, sir. Oh, um, my friend will have purchased it. He, he's on the train, I dare say. There's only one passenger board here, sir. A clergyman. Uh, yes, yes, that's the chap. Uh, where did you seat him? First class section, sir. <laughs> well, of course. Well, he didn't have no more than one ticket, sir. Well, he wouldn't have shown you mine, would he? I mean, not when I wasn't there. Well, I'm afraid I must insist. Look, the that... guard's getting impatient. Oh, all right, guard. I'm getting on. Here, take this to your house. Oh, thank you. Thank you kindly, sir. So far, so good. Now to find a seat. Might be a good idea to get rid of this coat, too. Once they find poor Tootil isn't me, they'll be onto it. Ah, a clergyman sitting all alone in a first-class carriage, just like the porter said. A clergyman? <laughs> now, there's a disguise that suit me. I wonder... I don't like it, Harry. I don't like it at all. Don't give in so easily, Joshua. He can't get far. Uh, you're sure the chap in the blue coat wasn't Essington? I had the train met specially. Some idiot with a cock and bull yarn, but not Essington. Still, it was useful. We now know that Essington's wearing a green coat. Well, Jenkinson's got good men on the job. I told him expenses to be no object. You told him? You can afford it, oh, if 
you find him. I, I, I knew something had happened. Right from the start, I was against the whole idea. We I... must go on with it now. What if I don't agree? What if I say it's gone far enough? Uh, Joshua, there's something I haven't told you. Philip Ridley. He's turned up. He's down huh? at the retreat now, helping in the search for Essence. Uh, Ridley? Harry, that's enough. We call the whole thing off. When Ridley finds out where Beatrix is... He we'll... won't get near. I promise you that. Yeah, but he may send a message, a note. <laughs> he already has. Eh? He sent her a note by hand. Took it to her myself. But uh, what did he say? Did he... Uh... He told her that the whole romantic affair is at an end. Just a holiday flirtation. Think no more of me, my dearest. His very words, I assure you. Poor girl, she was very upset. Harry, you... you didn't... Oh, yes, I did. <sighs> Love and war, remember? Well, it was easy, with the help of the letter you so kindly put into my hands. Th that's forgery. I told you, Joshua, we can't go back now. <laughs> can't we simply have Essington declared insane? Then we could get Beatrix married without his agreement. My dear Joshua... Essington is an extremely wealthy man with a very able solicitor. He is at present entirely of his own free will, receiving treatment for a breakdown in a very select establishment. Don't add another legal wrangle to our already substantial difficulties. I wish we'd never started it all. I wish I'd never got mixed all up in... I wish... is I wish I knew just how Essington managed to get away from us that day. Oh, good evening. Do you mind if I share this compartment with you? Oh, uh, not at all. <sighs> good. <sighs> Lovely weather. Should bring in the tides. Indeed. Hmm. The Reverend Pitcher Crispin, I believe. How did you know? Oh, the label on my suitcase. <laughs> you having a pleasant journey? Up till now, yes. An experienced traveller? Not at all. I travel very little. Exactly. So when you do, it gets known. What do you mean, sir? You don't suppose our meeting is accidental, Mr. Crispin? I do not understand you. I think you do. <laughs> but I assure you, I... Shall I just say, I assume you are not a member of the Anti-Ritual Association? Anti-Ritual? Certainly not, sir. Quite the contrary. I am a high churchman, sir. Then we do understand one another. Understand what, precisely? There are seven of them on this train, Mr. Crispin. Seven? Seven what, may I ask? Sworn enemies of church ritual. Evil men, low churchmen, every one. They will stop at nothing. Nothing. How... How do you know this? It's my job to know. To protect the lives of those who are threatened. Lives? Mm. Threatened? You don't suppose your unaccustomed journey has passed unnoticed? A new curiosity, perhaps. A passing mention in the Diocesan Gazette. A harmless paragraph in the local paper. How did you know? Uh... Let me shake you by the hand, Mr. Crispin. Sure. To be singled out from among so many, it, 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 it's an honour to know you. Singled out? I, I do not know what... As a target for their wrath. A target, Mr. Crispin, like the martyrs of old. I am not a martyr. I resent being called a martyr. Then you'll do what I say? Do what you say. Between us, we'll outwit these fiends. Put your trust in me, Mr. Crispin, and you'll live to genuflect and face east for many happy years. I can count on you. Hmm? How? Uh, wh wh what do you want me yes, to... Yes, good. I knew I could. Now, first of all, we must change clothes. Change clothes? Well, how else can we outwit them? But, uh, sh 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 look, look, look here. Sh silence. Both tickets, please. Have them tickets ready. Quick, quick, man, I beg you, we may be too late. But that's a ticket, Inspector. If we tell him, perhaps... Crispin, if you wanted to know the precise whereabouts, the exact compartment of a victim travelling by train, who would be the first person you would suborn to your evil schemes? You mean, he? Exactly, the ticket, Inspector. Come on, man, hurry, there's no time to argue. Oh, dear. Oh, the train is slowing. I descry the hand of Providence. Quick now, quick. Oh, very well. Here you are, it's my coat. Here. Yeah. My coat. Thank you very much. Oh, lucky for the same size. Oh, well, roughly. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, let's see. Now your stock. Please. Yes. Thank you. Tie. Uh, here. Thank you. Oh, yes. Now, trousers. Oh, I say, is it necessary? Oh, come on, man. You only two carriages away. Oh. Let me put them on. Ow. 
Why, sir? I still can't see why. Praise be, we're stopping. Now. Shoes, I'm oh, saying. Can't have brown shoes. You change shoes as well. Shoes of clerical God. Oh, there we are. Feet are up there. Yes. Oh. Well, another bit of shoes, Vicar. Another bit of shoes. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, quick. Quick, now's your chance. But you, you, you can't mean. How else? But where, where shall I go? Or what shall I do? Shall I live for two days? No, better make it three. Yes. Don't tell anyone anything. Then contact the Archbishop of Canterbury. Tell him everything. He'll advise you. But, but you, they'll kill you. Oh, let them try. I defy them. Oh, God, he's here. We're lost. No, I, I'm going. Oh! Ticket, sir? Certainly, my man. Um, I know it's in one of these pockets. Oh, yes, here it is. Oh, thank you, sir. Gorrington. The change at the junction, sir. Connection should be waiting. Thank you. Gorrington. Sounds quite nice. I wonder what sort of a curate I'll turn out to be. Well, let's find out some more about myself in these letters. Laundry bill for 20 surpluses. Letter from a Sunday school mistress. What's this? Ah, this looks promising. My dear Crispin, I look forward to meeting you the day after tomorrow to commence your year in this parish. It is good of your dear vicar to agree so readily. I regret I was not able to arrange a meeting first, but his recommendation is so strong, I feel no qualms on that score. A cab will meet you at the station, etc., etc. Who's it from? The Reverend Boniface Shuttleton Bowles, the vicarage, Gorrington. The Reverend Boniface Shuttleton Bowles, the vicarage, Gorrington. Well, thank you, sir. Is it news? We've run him to earth, Mr. Mason. Uh, this is a note from Walters. Our man is dressed as a curate, but behaving exactly like Mr. Mandel Essington. He caused chaos on the croquet lawn, broke several cucumber frames playing tennis, smoked all the squire's cigars, sang comic songs at a vicarage tea party, and kissed all the bridesmaids at a county wedding. Oh, it's Essington, all right. Walters knew the signs to look for. How far is it to... Where is it, Gorrington? About 40 miles. We could make it in about two and a half hours. Walters is staying on, keeping out of sight. Oh, good. Then I suggest... I do not see why Mr. Ridley should continue to concern himself. Oh, but I insist, Mr. Mason. One of the few redeeming features in this regrettable affair is Mr. Ridley's desire to help put right the harm he's caused. I still maintain... Come, that it's... gentlemen, to Gorrington. Mr. Essington! Open this door. We know you're in there. You're sure Walters is guarding the back of the house? Of course. Uh, knock again. Oh, hello there. Oh, this must be the vicar. <coughs> uh, now, gentlemen, uh, can I help you? Uh, the Reverend Shuttleton Bowles. That is my name. Uh, were you wanting me? Your curate, sir, is the man we have come to see. Oh, dear, not more trouble, I hope. Really, that young man... Uh, sir, we must see him urgently. And so you shall, so you shall. Though, though why he should have delayed so long in opening... Uh, Ah, uh, he has my key. There. Where can we find him? Well, if he should be in... We know he's in. Then the curate's study is on the first floor. The first door on the right. Quite, oh, quick, upstairs. Oh, first floor. Right. But really, oh, gentlemen, oh, I don't oh, see oh, the need for all this great... Essington, we have found you at last. <gasps> Empty, my George. He must be here. Walters would have seen him leave by the back door. Is there anywhere else in the house he might be? Anywhere else? Why should there be anywhere else? This is his room. And he must know that you're here. See, his window looks out over the roadway. Oh, quick, the window. Ah. There he is. He's got our carriage. Oh, oh my beauties. Off we go. Tally-ho, tally-ho. Oh, he saw us coming. Just waited till we got upstairs. We'll catch up with him. Another coach. Where can we get another coach? You could get one in town. It's about three miles. Three miles? How do we get to the town? Oh, I could lend you my bike. The tyres need blowing up, but one of you could go and come back for the well, others. Well, I'll go. At least he won't find it easy to pass unrecognised. That clerical garb is a marked man, a marked man. Now, Ridley, if you're kind to me... A very smart piece of work, that I said myself. Should give me quite a start. Mm. Now, this clergyman's rig, I must get rid of that. 
Mind you, it was nice being a curate. Young girls trust one, so. Oh, there may be something wrong. One of the horses looks lame. Whoa, there! You, you can't go on like that. Well, nothing for it. Shanks is pony from now on. Don't you worry, old chap. Someone will be along soon. Mm, but the devil of it is, how am I going to get rid of this confounded curate's get-up? In the middle of nowhere, too. Oh, well, best foot forward, I suppose. Look there, under those trees. My carriage. Uh, pull in there, Ridley. All right. See, one of the horses, it's lame. Not a sign of Essington. Not a sign. He can't get far on foot. Oh, say he has an hour's start. It'll only be a matter of a few miles. Uh, gee up, gee up. Uh, my carriage, uh, the, the horses. We'll send someone from the nearest town. They'll be all right here. This time, look out for a clergyman. There! Straight ahead! It's Essington! It must be! He's running pretty fast. Can't have kept that pace up for long. Stop! He's waving! He doesn't know it's us. Stop! Stop! I beg you! That's not Essington. What? We'll soon see. Whoa there! Oh, dear me. Oh. Thank heaven you've come. Quick, I must have a lift to town. Oh, one moment. We are looking for another clergyman. No, I assure you. What do you mean, no? Not another clergyman. I tell you, we're looking for another clergyman, a somewhat shorter man. I mean, I am not a clergyman. Not a clergyman? But how? I have been the victim of a dastardly outrage. My clothes, but, uh, these, sir, are not my clothes. They belong to Captain Webb's son. Captain Webb's son? Oh, he said he was Captain Webb's son. Uh, the famous channel swimmer. One moment. You say you are not a clergyman. That is so. Then who are you? Oh, Mr. Mason, really. I think he's some sort of accomplice of Essington, keeping us here talking while he... Really, sir. I must protest. Then tell us who you are. Stop all this cock and bull yarn about Captain Webb's son. My name is Davidson. I am classics master at Netherby School. So you say. Sir, if you will go back along the way you've come, turn off along a small lay on your left, you will come to the river. There you will find six of my young charges. Then why are you so busy running away from them clad in clerical garb? I am going to get them some clothes. Clothes? Are they in the habit of tramping the country unclad? Does the study of ancient Greece carry them that far? If you will only listen. Oh, Mason, let him speak. Thank you. We were out for a bicycle ride in search of Lepidoptera, one of my favourite pastimes. It was hot. The river looked inviting. So, well, it's a secluded spot. I permitted the boys to cool off in the waters. Well, then this, this blackguard came along, said he was the son of Matthew Webb, the swimming champion. Well, there seemed no reason to disbelieve him, though I was not aware that Captain Webb had a son who had taken to the closet. Oh, get on with it. Well, he, he suggested a race upstream. No, he was very insistent upon that point, a race upstream. He was to give us half a minute start. The boys were eager, so I agreed. We all swam as hard as we could. But when we arrived at the mark, we looked back. There was no sign of the, the man. What is more, all our clothes were floating downstream over the weir. Only this suit of clerical black was left. My own suit, a, a knickerbocker cycling suit, had gone. Uh, but the bikes, you said you had bikes. Oh, one was missing. Uh, the rest had their tires ripped and chain links removed. So, if, you, if you'll give me a lift to town... Uh, Mason, give him a hand. Oh, very well. Uh, come on. Oh, thank you. So, well, now we're looking for a man in a knickerbocker cycling suit. It's midsummer. There must be hundreds of them. We're wasting time, Mr. Ridley. Right. G up. G up there. If you'd listen to me in the first place. All right, all right, all right. No, get away, you silly sheep. Shoo, shoo, shoo. Ooh. 
Oh, this is warm work. Lucky. These clothes are a little on the large side. Yeah, they're good quality, too. <clears throat> but what I really need is a glass of something soothing. Hey, presto, there it is. A real English roadside inn. Who am I to question the workings of Providence? Francis, my boy, you will go inside and you will have that drink. Good day to you, landlord. Good day to you, sir. Thirsty weather for bicycling? Oh, quite so. I'll have a pint of the local brew. Won't do any better, sir, though I said it myself. Mm -hmm. Stranger around here? As you say, yes, yes, just cycling through. Escape him for a few days, eh? Well, you might put it like that. Ah, thank you. Let me see now. Ah, it's better. Uh, why the close study? Those uh, clothes. I'd say they weren't made for you, sir. Really? Well, I hardly see why Good you... quality. Uh, made for a real gentleman, I'd say. One has kept uh, a valet, maybe. A valet? Butler, perhaps. They often come in for their master's cast-offs. Valet, butler, cast-offs. Why, of course. Tell me, tell me. How did you guess? <laughs> <laughs> Lord bless you, sir. It ain't guesswork. Uh, I've been in service myself. I know the signs. Uh, <laughs> it was the refined way of speaking that set me on. Mm -hmm. Now, there's only one way to get that. Mix him with the real upper crust. But the upper crust don't go riding round the country on bicycles. <laughs> <laughs> so I puts you down as a gentleman's gentleman, right? Oh, that's that clever. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get up early to catch me, sir. You do indeed. Yeah. When young Lord Popple am up at a manor, it was his father I served in the old days. When he wants to take on a new man, he always sends him along to me to give him a look over. Mm. Always, like I said, I know the signs. Well, you're very good health. And yours, sir. Uh, where might you be working now, sir, if I might make a bold? Oh, why, pretty well anywhere. Beg pardon? To tell the truth, I'm um, between situations. Oh, I see. Uh, looking for a place? Well, I could certainly do it with one, just to tide over, you understand. Of course. Ever come across the present, Lord Popolum? Uh, youngish chap. Uh, gingery. Popolum, Popolum. No, no, I don't think so. Mind you, Mr... Uh, Mr... Uh, Parker is the name. Mind you, Mr. Parker... Between ourselves, he's not over clever. Strictly between ourselves, his old dad used to say he was the damnest fool he'd ever set eyes on. And he needs a valet. <laughs> My, you're on to it quick. Been let down, he has, and off on a visit tomorrow. Came in this very morning and asked if I knew of anyone. Only temporary, of course. It, well, it'd have to be. I've uh, other plans for the future. Then what are we waiting for? Mary, take over in the bar. I'm going up to the manor with this gentleman. Uh, you the chap old Rumber has told me about? Yes, Lord Popolum. Uh, right. Hold on a moment. Oh, Mr. Gen, dash it. Uh, pardon me, my lord, but it, the angle of the queue, it's quite wrong. Uh, what's that? If you'll allow me. Now, try it this way, my lord. Now. Well, I'm dashed. Yes. His grace often used to profit from my advice, my lord. His grace? Oh, ah, yes, references. I, um, I take it his grace was your last employer. Uh, by the way, which particular duke was he? I regret I cannot tell you, my lord. Huh? Not tell me, but <laughs> the dash it, I... The duchess, you understand. Huh? Unfortunate romantic attachment for myself. Oh. I gave my solemn word, avoid scandal at all costs. Oh, yes, so yes. it's quite impossible to divulge his name, my lord. Oh. Impossible. A, a lady's reputation is at stake. Oh, of course. But, um, but how am I to uh, take up references and all that? Well, would would a recommendation from the Prime Minister serve, my lord? The Prime Minister? Oh, by Jove, yes. Well, then, my lord, I'll write off myself today. He should reply within a week. Uh, meanwhile, my duties? Ah, yes. Now, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. You see, uh, tomorrow I'm due at Hiddlecombe Hall. Hiddlecombe Hall? Oh, some ghastly Gothic pile near London. Suits of armour, all that sort of thing. Built by a fellow named uh, Jones... Uh, between ourselves, not quite top drawer, sort of mm. superior salesman. I don't think I know any superior tradesman called Jones. Oh, no more do I. A friend of mine got me the invite. I seems this Jones fellow can do one a bit of good on the stock market. It's all a bit of a bore, dash it. Go. And then in the evening there's a dashed fancy dress ball. Fancy dress? Mm. Have to make an early start in the morning, I suppose. Dashed uncomfortable. Oh, there's no need for you to start early, my lord. 
Oh, we'll have to put in a dashed appearance in good time for the ball. His Grace used invariably to dispatch me by an early train with his luggage, so that when he came later, the right ducal atmosphere had been created. What a dashed good <laughs> idea. Oh, then I shan't need to rise at some ghastly hour before midday. Mm. Ah. No need whatever, my lord. Now, there's... It's just a matter of clothes. I, I fear I've nothing with me, just the ones I wear for cycling. Oh, no problem. We're the same size. You'll find my cast-offs in the second wardrobe. Ah. I'll ask the maid to have some put out for you. Thank you, my lord. Uh, and, and then tomorrow I'll go on ahead and herald your arrival. Good. Well, now, if your lordship would like a hundred up... Oh, but, but you're too good. I shan't get a dashed look in. His grace used to say, better watch good play than play badly, oh. my lord. <laughs> um, if you'll just spot up. Thank you. This time we will call it off, Harry. But Joshua... Uh, no, I've listened too long. We call it off, the whole thing. I'll, uh, I'll file a petition tomorrow. Joshua, listen. Jenkinson's got his men out. I'm to be told the moment anything's heard of. It won't be. Essington's got away. It's simply a matter of time. Time? Do you realise we've less than a month? I can do it, Joshua. You've got to find Essington, woo Beatrix, win her and weather, all in less than a month. It'll be enough if we're engaged. You could raise a loan on the prospects of marriage. Prospects? You talk about prospects with Essington roaming round Britain on a bicycle? I've got the girl. You forget that. Where have you got her? Better let nobody else knows, not even you. Uh, no harm must come to her, Harry. I won't have Oh, her. my dear Joshua, I have to produce her before witnesses in a happy, willing frame of mind. I'm not a fool. <laughs> Anyhow, my mind's made up. It's all off. We can't give up now. Oh, yes, we can. What's more, we will. I'll, I'll ring for Giles. Ah, oh, Giles, there you are. There's a gentleman asking for Mr. Mason, sir. Uh, Mr. Ridley. Ridley? Uh, Harry, did you... Ask him to come in, Giles. Uh, sir. Uh, 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 do as Mr. Mason says, Giles. Very good, sir. Uh, why has he come here? I left him with Jenkinson. Perhaps he's Mr. got news. Mason, uh, they told me at your residence I should find you here. Uh, this uh, is Sir Joshua. Uh, we have met uh, Sir uh, Joshua, I intend to renew our acquaintance when we find Mr. Essington, uh, sir. If uh, you find him, Mr. Ridley. Oh, Jenkinson has traced him. Huh? He has. Well, I have a carriage waiting. Where to join Jenkinson at Hiddlecombe Station? Hiddlecombe? Yes, Jenkinson will arrive there by train. Um, I'll explain on the way. We've only 50 minutes to make it. Joshua? Uh, uh, you go, Harry. I don't want to be concerned. Then let's be off. Sir Joshua was just saying how anxious he is for us to continue with our search for Mr. Essington. Isn't that so, Joshua? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, y y yes, of course. Ah, uh, gentlemen, allow me to introduce Lord Poplar. Mm, how do you do? Dash, funny business, this. I've explained the position to his lordship, and he suggests... Excuse me, sir, did I hear you say this gentleman was Lord Poplar? Of course he said I'm Lord Poplar. Who are you, may we ask? My name is Meadows. I'm the butler at Mr. Jones's residence, Hiddlecombe Hall. I see. And now, gentlemen, have I your word for it that this is Lord Poplar? Oh. Was he Lord Poplar? Oh, the dash fellow's drunk. I don't uh, think so, my lord. You have a reason for asking? I have, sir, I have indeed. You see... Lord Popplem has already arrived at Hiddlecombe Hall. What? He can't have. Of course, sir, I see that now. But a man certainly arrived this forenoon carrying his own cases, bearing the Popplem coat of arms. Apparently his manservant had let him down. But dash it, he is my manservant. If you thought Lord Popplem had already arrived, why did you come to meet this train? I thought the real Lord Popplem might be on this train. You see, here, gentlemen, read this. You take it, sir. Oh, it's a, oh, it's a, it's a telegram uh, read form. Read it, my lord. Uh, it's addressed to me, dash it. Outbreak of scarlet fever at Hiddlecombe Hall. Regret must postpone your visit. Signed, Jones. But I don't understand. I didn't uh, no. get any dash. No, my that. lord, I didn't send it. How did you get hold of it? The man calling himself Lord Popplem gave it to one of the chambermaids to send. He said it was a practical joke. Practical joke? My suspicions were aroused. I took it from the silly girl, told her to keep mum about it. Then I came to meet the train your lordship might be coming on. I think I did the right thing, gentlemen. Oh, quite right. You did quite right. And now I suggest we call the police. No. Oh, no, I can't. I don't dash well. See, why not? Dash, fellow goes about the place, passing himself off as me. The man is still at the hall. He is, sir. I am his medical advisor, Dr. Ah. Jenkinson. My card. You mean he's... He is sir. in my care. I shall be responsible for him. I'm sure your employer wouldn't thank you if you bring the police to his residence. We are expecting guests. Then come with us. Uh, you have a carriage, Mason? Yes. Then to Hiddlecombe Hall. I can assure you, there'd be no violence. My patience is not given to extreme attitudes, except with words. Oh, Lord Poplum, you are a one. You're not so bad yourself. 
Here, have a sip of this excellent champagne. I'm supposed to have fetched it for you, sir. Oh, well, no one need know. <laughs> they will when I get giggly. Then get giggly and be blow to them. Well, sir, if you insist. It's a reward for sending that telegram. <coughs> You, 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 you did send it, as I asked. Oh, I gave it to somebody else to send. Uh, who, exactly? Mr. Meadows. He's a butler. See that bilious-looking man with a two-acre shirt front? <laughs> oh, sir, you shouldn't. It was all right, wasn't it? Mm. I mean, he's honest. Yes, I'm afraid he is. Oh, well, have a hearty giggle while you may. Sir, there's someone at the door. Yes. I rather thought there might be. It's locked. The door's locked. <laughs> Open up, old man. We know you're in there. You didn't ought to have locked it. Sir, I never knew it was locked, I swear. Oh, don't you worry. It's me there after. But don't you see? I'll lose my job. I know I shall. Don't you sit here. Come on now. I'll never keep my character. Not after this. Look, do you want to keep your character and your job? Of course I do. Then stand by the window and scream. What? Don't argue. Over you go. And remember, I forced you to come in. Forced you, you understand. Go on. Yell your head off. <laughs> now... Stand right beside the door, unlock it, so, and wait. Let me try it. I tell you it's locked. Let me. Ah, it's oh. not locked. I'm sure I tried. Oh, Mary. Oh, the girl, over by the window. Oh, Mr. Meadows. Oh. She's fainted. The door. Essington. He's got out. Go on. It's locked. He's locked us in. Well, never you mind, sir. He won't get far. I've got the staff guarding the doors off the hallway. You're there, Simpson. Oh, you bet you can do it. All right, you Here, you come away. Come away. Oh, oh. oh. I say the dashed light's gone out. That's the fuse box at the top of the staircase. Oh, he's damned electricity. Simpson, you there. Now, listen, Simpson. Find your way to the stairs. Come up here and let us out. Well, are you sure there's no other Don't way? Don't worry, gentlemen. All the ways out of the hall are covered. Oh. Ah, what the deuce? Simpson, you all right? I'm all right. Just one of these blessed gentlemen. Oh. Oh. Hurry, man, hurry. When we get out, make straight for the fuse box, Meadows. I will, sir. Oh, I've got hold of someone, by Jove. Oh, sir. Oh, it's the dash maid. Uh, sorry. That's all right, sir. I don't mind a bit. Oh, there you are, Mr. Right, Meadows. Right, stand aside. Oh, uh, well, no, I fractured myself on that blasted uh, old man. All right, my man. All right for you. It's all very well, but it's a load of junk. It's pure swank, if you ask me. Oh, 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 the lights. Quick, out onto the landing. Hey. Oh, uh, where could oh, Essington have gone? Uh, the answer is nowhere, sir. Oh, but he isn't in the hall, dash it. And the staff are covering all the doorways out of the hall. Oh, what about the fellow who let us out? Simpson, which door were you covering? Oh, uh, yeah, 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 the front door, Mr. Medifun. Uh, the front door? He's got away. Yeah, He's got away again. Must have been when I knocked into that old shoot them all. Well, that would have hidden the opening of the door. I'm oh, sorry, I'm gentlemen. You've done what I said. Go on for the police, dash it. No point in detaining you further. Oh, come along, Mason. See if we can pick up the trail. He could be hiding in the bushes in the drive. We'll look on the way out. Good day, Good day, sir, gentlemen. Back to work, everyone. Oh, I'll bet you leave, now, what about me, dash it? I've got to change without a man. I'll see if Thomas, our second footman, can be spared to give you a hand, my lord. Oh, you. To think they used to fight inside these suits of armor. It's like being shut up in a tight-fitting boiler. Now, let's think what's the next move. I can't very well stroll about unobserved in all this medieval ironmongery. But, ah, but of course... The fancy dress ball. Just a couple of hours or so, and then I can mingle with the guests, find somewhere quiet and unscrew myself. Ha! Essington, you're saved again. Ow! Oh, I wish they'd measured me for the inside leg. Got away again. Harry, this is the end. We can't go on. We must keep after him, Joshua. Uh, so you say. So you say. You haven't any idea where he may be? Uh, Jenkinson has a list of all the night spots he used to frequent. We shall be um, going the rounds of them tonight. <laughs> Dash it. A man can't just vanish. Then we shall find him. What does Jenkinson say? Oh, I'm insisting that he keeps on with the search. I think he'd rather wash his hands of the affair. He feels that Essington's too much for him. He's not the only one. Oh, don't start that again, Joshua. Jenkinson hasn't got a reputation depending on the outcome. We have. We can't afford to afford? give up. Afford? All those expenses he's running up? That's the least of our worries. 
Nurse uh, Joshua. Uh, yes, Giles. Uh, Mr. Ridley is here again, sir. I have informed him you are engaged. He may have more news. Uh, show him in, Giles. Uh, very good, sir. Let me deal with him, Harry. He doesn't trust you. As you wish. Mr. Ridley, sir. Sir Joshua, I... Oh, I had not realized you were with this man. I should not surprise you, Mr. Ridley. Mr. Mason has my complete confidence. Yet he denied all knowledge of Miss Staines. Perhaps he thought my interests were best served by reticence, Mr. Ridley. Point of view with which I wholeheartedly concur. Come to the point, Ridley. Is there any news about Essington? I didn't come about Essington. Uh, then perhaps uh, some other time, Mr. Mason and I have important matters. So have I, Sir Joshua. Matters important to me. I think I can guess what those matters are. Uh, I do not intend to discuss them. But Sir Joshua, I want to know where Beatrix is being detained. Detained? I am convinced that if she were able to act freely, Beatrix would see me or let me see her. <laughs> really, Mr. Ridley? Oh, making allowances for your youth. That is the most arrogant assumption I have ever heard. The fact that the young lady does not wish to enjoy the uh, pleasures of your company... Beatrix and I want to get married. I wrote to Sir Joshua. And... Confound it, sir. I have already given you my decision. Well, then let Beatrix tell me. Let me hear it from her. Ridley, let me give you some advice as a man of the world. Withdraw from the situation with dignity. Do not cause the lady embarrassment, can't you see? Believe me, it happens all the time. The lady has simply changed her mind. I cannot believe that. Oh, a holiday in Switzerland, romantic scenery, a harmless flirtation... Promises lightly given no. in home to reality, down from the clouds. I, I tell you, I know. What about women? <laughs> How their minds work? Oh, my dear Ridley, that's a pretty wide claim. Oh, I know, Beatrix. And you set yourself up as an expert. Oh, come, Mr. Ridley, come. And while you are here, Mr. Ridley, I must insist that you do not take any further part in the search for Mr. Essington. But I must find him. Then you will do it on your own. I am giving instructions to Dr. Jenkinson that you are not to be included in our search party. But, sir... Good evening, Mr. Ridley. Can you find your way? Or would you rather I ask Giles to show you out? Very well. But I shall continue my search for Mr. Essington in the morning. All on your own, Mr. Ridley. How exactly will you go about it? I... I don't know, but... But I see that is my only hope of reaching Beatrix. <laughs> Oh, that's the last of my rival. You don't think he may get on to something? We don't know what he'll do. No, I'm not worried about Ridley. What's more to the point is that we don't know what Essington will do. In fact, what he's doing at this very moment. Mr. and Mrs. Hamilton Hemingway. How nice of you to come. How do you do? Hello. Lady Beaton and her nephew, Mr. Thomas Tootill. Lady Beaton, delighted, and Mr. Tootill. Your name, sir? Um, oh, well, just to pronounce me as Sir Lancelot. I didn't quite catch it, sir, but perhaps if you were to lift that visor... Uh, lift... Uh, well, no, well, it's stuck, you see. Yes, won't open. So, well, just announce me as Sir Lancelot. Guests are being announced by their real names, sir. Oh, are they? Are they? Well, um, in that case... Uh, um... I take it you have an invitation, sir. Well, of course I have an invitation. I mean, it'd be in my trouser pocket, wouldn't it, if these things had any trouser pocket? Uh, perhaps if I were to call one of the footmen, sir. No, uh, no thank you. That will not be necessary. Thank you. I beg your pardon, madam. Oh, darling, I knew you'd come. Oh, well, of course, uh, darling. You know this gentleman, uh, Lady Loman? Of course I know him, uh. even in that disguise, Basil Darling. <coughs> <coughs> Mr. Basil Darling. Oh, as soon as I heard you say Sir Lancelot, I knew it was you. You did? Naughty boy. How did you find out that I was coming as Queen Guinevere? Oh, crikey. <laughs> of course, your voice sounds a little different in that helmet, but my heart told me it was you. Oh, Basil. Wonderfully accurate thing, heart. It isn't safe to talk here. If my husband finds out you're here, we must try and somewhere quiet. Now, if it told it, um... Well, how are you staying here? Well, of course. Then might I suggest your room? My room? What a splendid idea. It's the second on the right on the first floor. Right, you go ahead and I'll follow. I'll just see if the coast is clear. Oh, Basil, this is the happiest day of my life. I doubt it. Still a little sad. In her room, reveal myself. 
borrow a suit of her husband's clothes. She can hardly refuse me now. I know all about battle. And off we go again. Oh, oh. oh I say, I'm made quite be sorry. Oh, that's all right, Blackbeard. Blackbeard? <laughs> yes, you mean my costume. Yes, uh, very becoming. I say, don't I know you? Your voice, your, your voice. No, no, I haven't that pleasure. I could have sworn. Good evening, sir. I'm dashed if it isn't that obliging friend of young Ridley. I'll have to stay a clear of him. Ah, here comes my charmer back again. It's all right, Bertle, darling. My husband's watching the dancing. Come along, my sweet. Right, oh. George, come home at once. Oh, Lord, another one. Don't think I haven't seen through your disguise. I've been watching you ever since you came in. Darling, who is this woman? Who, oh, indeed. As if you didn't know full well. You brazen hussy. Brazen hussy, Bertle. Basil, indeed. His name is George. Basil, my Basil. George, my husband. He's not your husband. You mean he hasn't told ah. you he's married? Look, ladies, really, listen. Basil, tell her. George, tell her. Ladies, ladies. Say it's me you love, Basil. Tell her it's me, George. Well, to tell you the truth, ladies, it's neither. Oh, you can't. Take that. Oh, yes, my sister, it's in the morning. Come along, dear. Leave this gentleman. Pity. I'll never know what that was all about. George and Basil, I just have to learn to live with it. Oh, no. Let's find some quiet spot and get unscrewed. Essington. Hello. Two tills recognize me. Oh, well. I'll make the best of it. Two till, my dear chap. That disguise threw me completely, I assure you. I've been lying low at auntie's, like you told me. Excellent, excellent. Best thing you could have done, believe me. Pity you didn't lie a little there. Where's my coat? Coat? Yes. Oh, oh, your coat. Well, um, the fact is, you see, I haven't seen Ridley. Well, not to speak to. I've been pretty close from time to time. Have you found her? Found her? Beatrix. Oh, do tell me you found her. Well, I wish I could, too, dear old chap. The fact is, I haven't. Then you better jolly well get a move on by, Joe. I say, steady on, steady on. You'll melt all that spirit down. I insist you come with me to Ridley's place. That's the last thing I want. What's that? I said, that'll be a last resort, you see, when I've got something definite to go So far as I'm concerned, this is the last resort. I can't go on knowing that Beatrix... Joe, should... make a fuss, old man. Everybody's looking. I'm past caring. Beatrix. Let's go somewhere quiet and talk it over. Very well. But I'm keeping hold of you all the way. All right, if you insist, yes. Come on, then. Through these French windows and into the garden. Ah, a summer house. Very convenient. Oh, well, come in, come in, my dear Tutil. Right. right. Now then, what? Have you found out? Um, well, well, look, first of all, help me off with these wretched fighting irons. There's a good chap. Take the gauntlets. Oh, you? very well. All right, then. Thank you. And pull, pull, that's it. Pull. Oh, lovely. Feel me fingers again. Now, now these, these leg irons, whatever you call them. Greaves, greaves. Ah, oh, that's it. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, pinch. Ow! Ow! I caught my finger on the bloody buckle. <laughs> oh. oh. That's got it. That's got it. That's ah. Lovely. Oh, Use the other one, then. Yes, sir. And get your leg up. <laughs> i give oh. you a leg up. I do. <laughs> Once they get in the, the old hunting togs on, I can tell you. Yes, yes. Now, Good man. Right. Now, this bitchy best pick. <coughs> yes, how you red, go? You know. Oh, yes, I see. Little buckle at the side. Just like it? a waspy. <laughs> yeah. There you are. <laughs> That's got it. That's it. Can you get your arm? And one more buckle. Now, it uh, just opens out on the hinge, I think. Right. Uh, That's it. I'll pop it down over here, shall I? And now let's get this old helmet, helmet off. Helmet, helmet, how did it go? Oh, it's stifling. Um, it, uh, it unscrews, yeah, it, I think. Yes, a little yeah. screw here on the side, it screws here. Yeah, yeah. mind you don't take the ears off, that's a good check. <laughs> not much, one of them. Not much margin for error. Ow. So sorry. It's all right. All right, not at all. Right on the side here, and, and this one here. Like this. Yes. Yeah, that's now it's just stuck with you. Uh, should uh, just lift, that's I think. It, and I've got it. Now lift it gently off the yeah. head. I like that's it. Up, up, uh, up, uh, up. Uh, up. Uh, oh. oh. Oh, yeah. I say, bit the oxygen again. <laughs> well, really, no idea. Uh, tell mm. me, tell me, are you on to anything? Well, no, not exactly. Then we'll go to see Ridley, both of us. Oh, my dear fellow, I... It's Ridley or the police. This time I insist. Well, then I haven't much choice, have I? All right, Ridley, it is. Look, j j just take a look around outside, will you, see if anyone's following us? Right you are. No. 
No, by Jove, I'm not leaving your side. I don't trust you but, anymore. But, but we may be in danger, deadly danger. That's all very well, but I'm not letting you out of my sight. Not this time. Oh, uh, well, have it your own way. We'll pick up a cab that's brought one of the guests. Cab here. I say, cab here. Where to, sir? Mayfair. Number three, bumper stairs. Very good, sir. Oh, uh, uh, cabby. Yes, sir. Uh, look, we may be followed by some bounders we're trying to avoid. If I suddenly shout, drive like the devil, do just that, won't you? Very good, sir. Now, oh, my good Tootil, you get on first. No, no, you won't escape me that way. You get on first, Mr. Ethington. If you insist. Drive like the devil. Hold them. Jim! Stop! Stop, I say! I say! Drive hard, cabby. Drive hard. That's the bounder I want to get away from. We're away, sir. Where to now? Uh, well, we won't go to Bumpers Terrors. Let's see now, let's see. A good night's rest is called for, and funds are running low. Oh, Joshua Horsham will be at home, so I can't go there. What about that interfering partner of his, Harry Mason? I know he's out looking for me, and the last place he'll look is his own home. He's got a comfy spare room, I remember, and with a convenient tree right outside the window. Yes. Ah, uh, num number 20, Pepperminster Court, Bloomsbury Cabbage. Do you know it? Pepperminster Court it is, sir. Hey, sir. Here. Yeah. That light frightened me eyes. Stay where you are. I'm going to call for help. No, 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 don't do that. It's all quite easily explained. Explain? Well, well the fact is, um, uh, I mislaid my front door key, you see. Yes. Well, I'm a friend of Harry Mason, you know, Harry. Well, well, yes, I'm a friend of his. I'm staying with him. I happen to know that there's no friend of his staying with him. He's been away from home for several days. Oh. Oh, look, I'll come clean then. My, my, my name is Francis Mandel Essington. Mandel Essington? Mm-hmm. You can't be. Oh, but I am. I have been for years. Don't you know me? I'm your ward. You're my guardian. At yes. least one of them. Well, you can't be Beatrix. I mean, she's an ugly little thing in pigtails. I didn't recognise you at first. Not that I ever saw much of you. You used to poke your nose round the door and make off like a startled rabbit. Yes, well, little girls always terrified me. But you, well, you're... Not little anymore, by Jove. I hope not. You know, of course, that I'm likely to get married shortly. Married? Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Congratulations. He's a nice young fella. Only met him once, but he seems the right type. Young? Well, of course. Yeah, I mean, he's not more than 25 or so, surely. You can't mean... Well, then it's, um, what's his name now? It's on the tip of my tongue. Sidley, Riddle, Riddle. No, Ridley, Ridley, that's it. And <laughs> Ridley, they try to tell me I've got a bad name there. <laughs> Oh, no, look, I say don't do that. What's the matter? Is it something I've said? Don't pretend you don't know. But I don't, honestly. Your fellow guardian must have told you. What, you mean, oh, Joshua? I haven't seen him for months. Then you don't know. <laughs> we seem to be going round in circles. Your friend, Harry Mason. That's the man I'm likely to marry. Marry Harry Mason? But, well, it's none of my business, of course, but isn't he just a tiny bit... Well... Mature? Yes, exactly. A tiny bit mature. You can't trust younger men. Oh, can't you now? They let you down. Mm -hmm. They do? Well, no, I should have said that some of them, Philip Ridley, for instance, were pretty dependable. Ha! Huh. What do you mean, ha? Huh? He wrote a letter. Here. I see. Hmm. You know, it's a bit odd. Is that all you can say? No, I mean the date. The date? Hmm, because if we are to go by the date, it seems young Ridley wrote this letter calling the whole thing off. On the very same day, he was down at my country residence asking for my permission to marry you. But that's impossible. Would seem so, wouldn't it? A bit, Beatrix, who gave you this letter? Why, Harry Mason. Who has, for the past week or more, been pursuing me from pillar to post, I imagine, to persuade me to agree to him marrying you. And Philip? Oh, he's been there as well. <laughs> Everywhere I go, sooner or later, they both turn up. 
Yeah. Had it ever occurred to you, Beatrix, that a more mature man may not be above a little bit of deceit, especially where a considerable sum of money is involved? Oh, what can I do? What can I do? Well, I suggest we both call on young Philip. I know his address. So do I. I, I, I heard it from Tootill. You know Tootill? Oh, rather, yes, we're the best of friends. Oh. Well, now, um, I'll, I'll look the other way for five minutes, and then we'll, we'll both go out the way I came in. It, it's quite easy. I wish they had a tree like that by the wall of the retreat. There you are, Philip. Oh, Beatrix. I, I never wrote the note. They told me you changed your mind, but, and I really think I was beginning to believe Oh, them. how could you, my precious? Oh, darling. Uh, but, but please, uh, just a moment. Uh, later, later. We still have to get Sir Joshua to agree, and at the moment he seems to be backing the opposition. Yeah, but, but Mason can't marry Beatrix unless you agree, Essington. No. And Beatrix can't marry you unless Joshua agrees. Oh, I know. But things as they are, she might as well enter a nunnery. It's my confounded money, Oh, you're Philip. right there. I've been making inquiries. What about? With a well-known firm of Horsham and Stookley. It seems they've made one or two unwise deals. One, particularly. Oh. Uh, nothing definite, of course, but some nasty rumours are going round. If a certain bill isn't met, they'll be in trouble. So, with you married to Mason, quickly, the oh. money. Money. That's the solution to the problem? Hmm? Yeah. Tell me, where'd you bank? Oh, me? me? Why, why, at Fellows. So do I. Got a chequebook? Well, of course. Then off we go. Off? off? Where to? Why, to call on my fellow guardian, of course. We'll settle this once and for all. Yes, Higgins. It's three o'clock in the morning. Mm. If this is your idea of a joke. Not a joke, Josh, old man. Strictly business. It's about young Beatrix here. Uh, that's another thing. That girl ought to be safe in bed. Oh! <laughs> I'm responsible for her. We are responsible, Josh. Uh, Sington, I, I, I don't like to say this, but... Uh, 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 you can hardly count yourself responsible. Hmm? Uh, Jenkinson's out looking for you, you know. Oh, that's all off, haven't you heard? Heard? Heard what? Well, I've been signed off. I mean, fit for circulation, cured. I don't believe it. Mason, what does it? Ah, Mason. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned him. He's after Beatrix money, I suppose. <laughs> oh, take the beastly money. So long as I marry Philip, I don't care. Oh, steady on, my dear. If you go saying things like that, they'll put you in the retreat. Oh. Anyhow, there's no need. How much do you want, Josh? Uh, uh, 30,000. Uh, just to tide over, um, well, a difficult time. Checkbook. Pen. So. 30,000 pounds. Uh, Joshua. Oh, sham. There we are. I've dated it a week from today. To give the young couple time to get married by special license. Oh. Young couple? Which young couple? Sign here, Josh. Our joint approval of the marriage between our ward, Beatrix Staines, and Mr. Philip Ridley. <laughs> but uh, no marriage, no check. Oh, uh, very well. There. Right. Now, there's no need to keep you from your beauty sleep any longer. Cheerio, Josh. Cheerio. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye. I don't know how to thank you, Essington. Then don't try. It's a pity those two rogues get off scot-free. Oh, but they don't. How do you mean? Yeah. One for you, Philip, and one for Beatrix. <gasps> a cheque for £70,000. Mine for 50000 Be sure to present them at the bank, the Mayfair branch, the moment they open, on your way to the registry office, in fact. But, but why? Because by the time Sir Joshua presents his, I think they'll have checked up with Dr Jenkinson about me. But you're cured. You said so. Yeah, uh, well, yes, Josh, believe me, bless him. But it isn't true, you know. Oh, but... By tomorrow morning, I shall be back inside the retreat. You... And anything I sign tonight will be just another proof of my utter irresponsibility. Oh. But you'll be married. They can't very well unmarry you, can they? <laughs> <laughs> Sir Joshua's signature will stand, of course, unless he wants inquiries made into his firm's finances, and somehow I don't think he will. But listen, you must fight those checks. Yes. Go to Perry. Mm, he's a good lawyer, yes. Perry. And he'll know how to get them declared useless. Jenkinson will back him up. As for Joshua, you have to find his money elsewhere. <laughs> of course, my dear, you might feel inclined to help him out with the approval of your oh. husband, of course. Oh, of course, I will, I will. We both will. Actually, it's a good investment, Horsham and Stukeley. With Mason off the board, they should do quite well. Uh, this is where you get off, I believe. Oh, but Essington, you're not irresponsible. You're as sane as anyone I know. I agree with you, Philip, I agree. But for once in my life, I'm going to insist that I'm not. And with Dr. Jenkinson to back me up, I shall succeed. Oh, dear, dear guardian. Mm. Goodbye, and bless you. Bye. Here, yeah, Gabby. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Come on. Bye-bye. Hurry along now. 
Where to, Governor? Oh, uh, the retreat. It's, it's at a place called Bridminton. Can you make it? Make it? Well, for what that young gentleman just gave me, sir, I'll make Scotland. And Bridminton it is. Up there. Yep. And Cabby. Yes, Governor? There's no need to hurry. It's a lovely night for a drive. And I don't suppose I'll have another for a long time. Not for a very long time. by Eva Stewart, Christine Winter, Jilly Gratham, Nigel Anthony, Patrick Tull, Christopher Ashley, Esmond Rideout, and John Sampson. The play, which came from Bristol, was produced by Brian Miller. <laughs>